So in the last video, we set up the idea of a synchronous data flow graph and showed an example firing sequence and then showed this kind of odd data structure, the topology matrix that can be used to represent how the firings of different nodes in the synchronous data flow graph affect the amount of data in buffers in the graph. And that sounds like a really weird idea that just comes out of nowhere, um, even if you understand the concept of trying to schedule a graph, right? What does this matrix really do for us? And as I ended the last video by saying, one of the things this matrix allows us to do is it allows us to represent the effect that firing a given node has on the size of buffers um, through matrix multiplication. So for example, firing uh, the node two, which is the second component of this vector, um, changes the buffer sizes by adding one piece of data to the buffer on arc two and changing the amount of data in arc one by zero, so adding nothing and removing nothing. And the reason that this is helpful is once we have this formulation, we can actually see that the effect of a sequence of node firings can also be computed from this representation. So suppose we fire a sequence of, vec of uh, nodes uh, let's say it's two nodes, we fire node two and then node one. So in this case, it would be the multiply and then the up sample. So in that case, we can think of the effect of the first node firing, the up sample fire, or excuse me, the um, multiply firing as the topology matrix times zero, one, zero. And we can think of the effect of the up sample firing as the effect of multiplying the topology matrix by one, zero, zero. And if you're good at matrix algebra, you might be able to see that this is going to add two elements to arc one, which is exactly what the up sample does. It fills up the buffer of size two on arc one. And actually, if you know a little bit of matrix algebra, you know that uh, matrix multiplication distributes over matrix addition. So we can rephrase this as the topology matrix times the sum of these firing vectors. And actually, we can generalize this. So if we have some firing sequence, sequence, like we fire vertex 1 and then vertex 2 and then all the way out to vertex n, the effect of the firing sequence on the total amount of data in the data flow graph's buffers is the topology matrix times the sum of all of those firing vectors. And once you see this, it's just one more step to see what a reasonable procedure for deciding how often different nodes can fire is. So let's just abstract the topology matrix away and call it T. So the way to execute an SDF graph is to find a totally non-zero firing vector such that the topology matrix times the, not the firing vector V is equal to zero component-wise, and V is greater than zero component-wise. And these criteria might seem a little odd, but what the first criteria means is that if t times v is equal to zero, that means the net effect of the sequence of firings of all of the uh, elements denoted in v is equal to zero. So there's no change in the amount of data in the buffers over the firing of the sequence, just like we saw in our example sequence at the start of this video series. And then the second criteria, v is component-wise greater than zero, really just means that Every one of these components has to be greater than zero, which means every single node in the graph has to fire at least once. So we can think of these two mathematical requirements as basically being two different uh, requirements about the properties of a high quality schedule or a high quality firing sequence, that it doesn't change the total amount of data in buffers and there's no starvation. Or put yet another way, if the total amount of data in the buffers doesn't change through this firing sequence, like I mentioned in the first video, we can repeat this firing sequence infinitely many times over and over and over again without having to worry about buffers overflowing and therefore without having to worry about data loss or deadlock. And if V is greater than zero component wise, that means that in this firing sequence, every single node is going to fire at least once, which means this schedule is not going to starve any of the nodes. And if you're familiar with distributed systems terminology, uh, starvation just means uh, one process never firing or never getting access to the resources that it's going to need. So if we can find this vector of firings with these properties, we've basically found a sequence of firings where we know that we can repeat the process over and over again with no deadlock and no buffer overflow. Um, and we know that if we can find this sequence of firings, that we're also going to have no starvation in the sequence because everything that needs to happen is going to happen at least once in every execution of it. 
Okay, so again, just to review, let's put some symbols on here, V1, V2, and V3. What we really want is this matrix for our example graph, the topology matrix, times this symbolic vector is equal to zero. And this is a linear programming problem, right? We can just blow it out into uh, these equations, and then we can simplify them down, and we can move the equalities around, and we see that 2 times V1 equals V3, and V2 equals V3. Now, solving this for the smallest values that we can find uh, that are greater than zero, we can get V1 equals one, so the up sample fires once, V2, fire, which is the multiply, fires twice, and V3, uh, which is also equal to choose, the adder is gonna file, fire twice. And you might notice that these are the counts of the firings we saw in our earlier example. The up sample fires once, the adder fires, uh, excuse me, the multiplier fires twice, and the adder fires twice. However, notice that this schedule, and uh, I'm actually putting that in air quotes even though you can't see me, isn't a complete schedule. It says how often each node needs to fire, or how many times each node needs to fire in our desired firing sequence, but it doesn't say the exact order of the firing. So when does the up samples firing happen relative to these two firings of the multiplier, and when do these two firings of the adder happen relative to the fires of the multiplier? In other words, what's the ordering? of these firings, right? What order should we fire these guys in? So like I was mentioning, our firing vector really just kind of represents an unordered sequence that contains one up sample, two adds, and two multiplies. And now that we've found it, we need to refine this into a complete schedule by figuring out the ordering of these events within the sequence. And that's what I'm going to talk about when we get to the next video. So I'll see you in the next video.